space. It's scary, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Yeah, from devastating solar superstorms to asteroids and also UFOs, of course, to uh, what the absolute heck is space even made of? That's also a question we're gonna try and cover today. What is up, Top 10 fam? Welcome back. I am one of your hosts today, Olivia Kozlowski. <laughs> and I'm Taylor McWaters, and today we are covering the top 10 solar system discoveries that terrified the world. It's gonna be spooky. Hold out your butts. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Solar Superstorms. A comfortingly titled new research paper called Solar Superstorms, Planning for an Internet Apocalypse, was presented at the SIGCOM 2021 Data Communication Conference, and this paper stated that there is a 1.6 to 12% chance of a solar storm to exist, which would cause an internet blackout. The ramifications of this would be unprecedented in our digital world, and the effects would be seen globally. The paper also explained that the solar storm could be a massive of one that actually turns into a solar superstorm, which was then called a black swan event. There have been severe solar storms before, with a more recent one in 1989 that caused a nine hour blackout in Northeast Canada. The reason this idea is so terrifying is because of how ill prepared we are in the event of something like this happening. And if the risk is as high as a 12% chance, it seems like it should be a thing that is at least somewhere on the list of concerns. Wow. It's nice to know that the sun, the thing that helps sustain life as we know it is also terrifying and might be the end of us. Guess that's why you don't rely on a ball of gas in the sky. Number nine, UFOs. Okay, back in 2017, a $22 million defense program was put in place called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. <gasps> Inhale, yeah, it's a long title. No cool name for it yet, it's just a lot of space shit. Its purpose was to study military encounters with UFOs, yeah, seriously. Remember when UFOs were on the news all the time and nobody seemed to give a what was that all about? Well, Navy pilots were coming out with their stories. Eventually, come 2019, senators felt they need to be briefed on these sightings. They were starting to look a little too good. After a vote by the Senate Intelligence Committee in June 2020, it was agreed that UAP reports are to get added to the Intelligence Authorization Act for 2021, for now. That's why more and more footage is coming out on the daily. These incidents were filmed ages ago, but now they're being released because they're allowed to. According to the Times, these 120 incidents that were studied it turns out the US military is not responsible for any of them. If they happen to be advanced drones sent to spy on the military, it's kind of important to find out who sent them, no? Recently, a former Navy pilot, Ryan Graves, spoke out to 60 Minutes, and he explained that these UAPs would pop up during exercises every day for at least a couple of years. Every day, that's a lot of it's a lot of alien dudes just popping up, being like, oh, what's up? And they're flying away. That's crazy. If these were tactical jets from another country that were hanging out up there, it would be a massive issue. But because it looks kind of different, we're not willing to actually look at the problem in the face. We're happy to just ignore the fact that these are out there watching us every day. That's what Ryan said. You know what? I'm with you, Graves. Let's just get to the bottom of this. Also, aliens? Probably. In our number eight spot today, we have the Halloween Skull Asteroid. A radar image of asteroid 2015 TB145 is a perfect image to bring up this spooky season because it quite literally looks like a skull. This object was captured using the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico on October 30th, 2015, and NASA says that it is likely a dead comet. To make things a little more creepy, this Halloween decoration looking asteroid flew by Earth on Halloween night in 2015. And it was a close drive-by at that. It was within 301,986 miles of our planet, which is only 1.25 times the distance between Earth and the Moon. The asteroid flew by Earth again on November 11th, 2018, but luckily it was at a more safe and comfortable distance. It still looked creepy though. Number seven, Apophis. We thought the world was going to end in 2012. The Mayan calendar tipped us off and they even made a movie about it. John Cusack got a paycheck because of the Mayan calendar. That's a fact. What a weird thing. Well, we might be seeing another disaster movie in eight years. The asteroid Apophis is in the category of potentially hazardous asteroids. And on April 13th, 2029, it will barely miss the Earth and it's passing. And around 2 billion people will be able to witness the possible end with their naked eye. How lovely. Let's all gather outside and watch how we almost bit the dust. Also, it's on a Friday the 13th, so that's pretty cool. Scientists were actually unsure about if this thing was gonna hit or not, and even to this day, Earth's gravitational pull may just influence this near miss. If an asteroid hit Earth, honestly, I'd just chill. I would just go out in a canoe and just lie down and just close my eyes, that'd be it. What a pleasant way to go, in a weird way. In our number six spot today, we have the mysterious gap. 
This discovery is less terrifying and more just absolutely fascinating, but I had to include it because it's a really new development and I wanted to tell you about it. So basically, a new analysis by scientists at MIT of ancient meteorites found something new and super interesting. In the early solar system, there was what is referred to as a protoplanetary disk of dust and gas that rotated around the sun, and eventually it all coalesced into the planets that we know and love today. So this new study and analysis suggest that a sort of mysterious gap existed within the disk somewhere around, I don't know, 4.567 billion years ago, and it was in an area near where the asteroid belt is today. The reason this gap is mysterious is because it isn't quite clear what the cause of this gap was. There are a few possibilities, including Jupiter during the time when it began to take its shape. Because of its extremely large gravitational pull, it could have pushed gas and dust towards the outskirts, which would have then left a gap gap in the developing disk. There are other possibilities, but regardless of whatever caused this gap, it is said to have likely served as a cosmic boundary that kept materials on either side from interacting with each other. Number 5. The Oort Cloud If you thought the eye cloud was scary, well, buckle up pal. Dating back to the origin of the solar system, that's always a fun rabbit hole to go down, the Oort Cloud may have been formed when our star was created in a nebula. It's heavily theorized that our sun sucked in material from other stars that were forming at the same time as itself. And it's this massive solar cloud made of two trillion icy, massive objects. It just sits at the edge of the solar system, and rumor has it, this is where long period comets originally come from. Like Halley's Comet, which goes and then it'll come back in like 40 years. That's where it goes. These objects in the cloud are referred to as trans-Neptunian objects. It's named after Jan Oort, who theorized it in 1950, but even before then, back in 1932, Ernst Opik proposed the idea. Oort cloud, Opik cloud, tomatoes, tomatoes, y'all are brilliant. Please tell us how our world's gonna end by discovering these. You're doing great. In our number four spot today, we have Bye Bye Milky Way. Okay, so this isn't necessarily to do with our solar system specifically, but it has implications for the Milky Way galaxy in which our solar system resides in, so today we're counting it. Some sort of unidentified thing that is larger than anything in our known universe is sucking portions of the Milky Way away. In 2009, researchers first found a cluster of galaxies moving at extremely fast speeds towards a small area of the sky. This area is located between the constellations of Centaurus and Vela, and whatever this whole thing is, it has been dubbed Dark Flow so that it can sit on the shelf with the other terrifying space mysteries like dark energy and dark matter. Number 3. Uranus Tilt Ha! I said Uranus! Awesome! Get your chuckles out now, you clowns! We're talking about serious space matters. This isn't a joke. We're still trying to figure out to this day why Uranus rotates on its side, when every other planet have their axis pointing up. Uranus's tilt is 98 degrees, so there's long periods of time, I'm talking like 40 years, where the North Pole or the South Pole will just face the sun directly. Perfect planet to take up perineum sunning, I'd say. Other planets in our solar system have a prograde rotation, or they go counterclockwise depending on which way you're looking at it. But Venus has a retrograde rotation, so the theory here is that something big hit these planets. Early in their planet life, scientists believed that Uranus was hit by a massive rock. Or a UFO, anything large enough to move a planet. You be the judge. You drop your ideas in the comments. We have no idea. I'm guessing Thanos. In our number two spot today, we have Bye Bye Moon. <laughs> today we're saying bye to parts of our galaxy and maybe even our moon? I mean, not really, but kind of. The moon is apparently slowly, sadly moving away from Earth. When I say slowly, I mean slowly, as it's at a rate of about half an inch a year. But still, when we're talking about our cosmic best buddy, half an inch seems like a lot. The moon isn't only the thing that lights up our night sky, the moon plays a vital role to our lives here on Earth due to its companionship and gravitational pull. The moon's gravity is what causes the tides of our ocean, so without our moon, who knows what would happen to our marine ecosystems. The moon is also responsible for the axial tilt of the Earth and how it stays in relatively the same place. Without the moon, we either wouldn't have any tilt at all, or we would be tilted all the way. This would mean that we either would have no seasons, or some of the most extreme seasons any of us have ever seen. While it doesn't appear the moon is going anywhere soon, sometimes we just have to keep an eye on on her to make sure. And finally, number one, Amuamua. 
Unidentified aerial phenomena doesn't always have to be a flying saucer or an alien per se, although it's pretty fun to think about. But look at Oumuamua, for example. Oumuamua was this mysterious object that flew into our solar system years ago. It was first discovered in October 2017, and it was the first ever interstellar asteroid detected by humans. Pretty big deal. Comets' technical names begin with the letter C, and asteroids the letter A, but with Oumuamua's discovery, they have made an entirely new classification letter, I for interstellar. Oumuamua translates to a messenger from afar arriving first, and scientists are leaning towards this object being a UAP or some type of future alien technology. As crazy as it sounds, listen to this. Oumuamua was thin and long. They referenced it to a cigar, and it shot across the cosmos like a comet, only it didn't have a tail. So the first thought was, okay, hey, maybe it's hydrogen blasting off of the object and that's what's causing it to whip into our solar system at high speeds. But the tricky thing is, Oumuamua changed its mind on its destination. Apparently, the object measuring at about 2,500 feet long, by the way, came into our solar system and instead of orbiting around the sun again, and then like everything else, just dipping, Oumuamua just turned instantly and left the solar system as if it hit something and then bounced off of it. The Spitzer Space Telescope didn't detect much heat coming from the object as well, and based Based on its size and the trajectory of the sun, the object has to be extremely shiny, and they're predicting it has a reflectance that's 10 times higher than previously studied solar system asteroids. Could this thing be an interstellar visitor? Well, more signs point to yes because of its odd rotation. It rotates every eight hours, so if it was an interstellar comet, the tail propelling it at those insane speeds wouldn't let it spin like that. It would just go So what do you guys think of a Muamua? Alien ship or a long lost part of the Oort cloud? Comment down below. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see us again. Yes, we're pretty, we're, we're not bad. We're kind of cool. We're curly haired. We're the curly combo. We're the curly combo. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. No names? Like, see ya. See ya. Jen's editing this. Sure, he wrote in. Hi, Jen. Jen, <laughs> I changed your head on your thing. You didn't notice. Now you did. Hmm. You look like your Halloween mayor. All right, hit it off. Let's do it. Let's do it. <clears throat> what is up, Top 10 fam? Welcome back. I am one of your hosts today. <laughs> I didn't change it. I didn't change it. You gotta lay in that. You gotta lay in that right now. See the bullying that I'm getting, Chris? They're writing all this bull noodle neck. I wrote and I'm noodle neck bean head. I'm Taylor noodle neck Sanders. bean head. And today we are going to be covering. Oh yeah, my god. Okay, see ya. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. Alright. Okay. Don't worry about it. I walk on text like an a**hole. Jesus, sorry. Robin Williams sent me a friend request. I wonder if it's him. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> to this day! <laughs> the gap. Oh, the Oort cloud. Oh god, I'm gonna get the giggles oh, out. Oh, the Oort cloud! <laughs> I'm gonna say, Oort. Oh, sh**.